give the Lord a hand. Amen. Who wants to trade their sorrow this morning? I know I do, huh? Sickness, pain. Let's trade it this morning. I'm trading my sorrow, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. This is such an awesome time as we begin to move into a time of taking communion. The ushers are going to begin to pass out the elements. And it's such a beautiful time to reflect on that precious sacrifice that was made for you and I. Amen. That covenant that was made. that walk through something that none of us would ever want to go through. But he did it because he loved you. Not just me, but not just you, but all of us so much. He went through that. He died on the cross. But the beautiful part is he didn't just die, did he? He rose again. So this morning, just take some time and think about that beautiful, beautiful covenant that was made for you and I.
Thanksgiving over? No. Not at all. What are we doing this morning? Communion. Thanking God for what? His son and the sacrifice. Let's take just a minute to reflect on Thanksgiving, your day, Thanksgiving this morning. So let's, let's all join in just a moment of silent prayer. Examine your lives, give thanks, no complaints, thanks. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we just thank you this morning for the sacrifice of your son as we share in this communion this morning, Father. May we indeed reflect on how lucky we are to be in Christ. And Father, if we are not in Christ, I would pray this morning for those that are kind of on the boundary in thinking that they come to Christ this morning. That's why we do this. We give thanks to God for the sacrifices. So we just, again, thank you for allowing us to meet like this and to give thanksgiving for your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Then the Lord said to the disciples, you know, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to leave a memento for you. So this memento is the bread. It's also the wine. So as we take the bread this morning, let's thank God for the sacrifice of Jesus' body. Father, we just thank you this morning that, again, we can come to you. We thank you for the broken body of Christ given for our salvation, for our hope for the future. And, Father, we so need it, and we just thank you again in Jesus' name for that broken body for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take together. And then he said to the disciples also, my blood is going to be shed for you, for futures, for those that will be alive in 2,000 years or 3,000 years. It really doesn't matter. And he said, I will willingly shed my blood for you, which he did. Let's thank the Lord for that blood. Father, we thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made, the continuing sacrifices that you make for us as we go astray at times. And Father, we can always come back to you and we know that you're there. We know that you have already paid the price for us. So we just thank you this morning again for your shed blood and your broken body. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take together. Let's stand up this morning. We're going to move into a time of prayer. And uh, I just want to encourage you this morning if you're in need of prayer, um, allow a brother or sister in Christ to pray with you. There's something powerful when two or more gather together. Amen. You can make your way to the front. There'll be a brother or sister in Christ that'll meet you up here. We also have a wonderful brother and sister in Christ back here in the corner where there's a cross that would love to meet and pray with you. Let's just take some time and just worship the Lord together. Pray together as brothers and sisters.
celebrating your birth on Christmas Day, God. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful thing. We just celebrate you this morning, Jesus. Lord, I just pray for everyone here this morning. Pray for your blessings, God. For your freedom, God. For your healing, Lord. For your deliverance, Lord. Your restoration, Jesus financial income, Lord, for mending of broken marriages and broken relationships and broken families. continue to worship this morning as we sow into the kingdom of God with the giving of our tithe and offering. It's an awesome opportunity to, to give to the Lord. Amen. He whispers in my ear and tells me that I'm taken the big offering, haven't we? But he's here for the big, big offering. This goes toward the mortgage. Doesn't go anywhere else. Isn't it great how God has blessed this congregation, the city of Guthrie? God's not going to quit, is he? He just keeps on going. So, if you feel led, Tuff is going to hold these baskets. I'd like to see it overflowing, and Tuff would too, wouldn't you? 
<laughs> so at this time, if you would, come down and, and place your offering in his basket. And again, this is for the mortgage. Got it. so much. Let's look to the Lord and thank him for all that he provides for us. Father, we just thank you this morning for your provision, for the sacrifice again of your son for us. And Father, we know and we have you have promised us that this isn't a one-shot thing. It just keeps on going. And Father, we just live with that hope that you've provided for us. And we thank you for this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. And at this time, we're going to dismiss the children. So children, if you will, just gather up front. You can walk out this door right here. If you're new or visiting, you're more than welcome to go with your child over there, or they can follow the rest of the children over. Amen. Bless our children. Praise the Lord. Yes, bless them. And if you will, stand up where you're at, find somebody, hug a neck, shake a hand, tell someone you're glad they're here this morning.
Good morning, community. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, I am Jace Dunnigan. I'm stepping in for the wonderful, lovely Miss Jennifer Wagner. She's not here. She has some sick babies at home. I'm going to go over the bulletin, some announcements. Uh, December 8th, which is next Sunday at 6 p.m., we're having a Christmas bank banquet for family and friends. There's a sheet that looks like this in your bulletin. Fill it out if you would like to come. We would love to have you, certainly. Besides that, tonight at 6 p.m., uh, we're fellowshipping with the body of Christ. Uh, it's going to be here. There's going to be some other local churches come. We're going to kind of tell the story of Jesus and sing Christmas songs and fellowship with other churches in the community. And next Saturday is the men's breakfast at 730 in the community building. Uh, all the men who want to get up and get out of the house early come. It's, it's fun time. Uh, it's great fellowship with the, with the other men in the church, and uh, I enjoy it. And December 10th, I believe, is a Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. There's a, we're going to do a Christmas curling at the Westview Living Center on 1900 West Harrison. Uh, another thing, if, if you put on a name tag uh, that, were, that are in the four-year, exchange them with somebody. It's a good way to get to know somebody. Uh, you can swap it, and they can pray for you, and you can pray for them, and you will forever remember that person. And if you're a new visitor or a member and haven't yet, check out the Community Church Facebook page. We post a lot of stuff of the activities that are coming up and happening. And uh, thank you for your time and enjoy Pastor Bill's work. Amen. Thank you. Good job. Well, I don't know about you, but there are, this time of year, a lot of things we begin to become aware of, and there's a lot of needs. What I'm spreading out here are uh, bags. And um, I don't know about you, how many ate really well in the last few days? How many ate like beyond well? See there, I thought so. This is, uh, I wanted to bring attention to a couple of things. This here uh, happens to be a bag that some family in our church here took and filled with food, non-perishable food items. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but there are quite a few people in this region who probably didn't eat as well as we did. Uh, in fact, some probably didn't eat hardly anything. Uh, and we as a church uh, annually collect food. Uh, some people would rather write a check and have somebody else go out and buy the food, but th we, we have these bags, and I'd like to encourage us as a church body to, to come before you leave, grab a bag, just take it with you when you go grocery shopping, and as you're doing your normal, you don't have to go special, uh, just fill, throw a few cans of uh, non-perishable. It doesn't have to be turkey and dressing and all that. It's, it's just for a pantry, uh, people needing to eat, and uh, make it look as healthy as that one. It'd be amazing. Uh, I just have to tell you, the Lord has already uh, met some needs within the families within this church body. And I, I know that uh, we think always the needs outside of our church. Well, that's not the case. We actually touch families, and some families are going through some tough transition times, and God's moving them to another pasture, but in that time, uh, we've already filled a, a back seat up full of food, and I know you'd want to be part of that. So uh, I'd encourage you there. There's another uh, opportunity for um, helping, uh, and we're going to show a video. Uh, we, are, we do a ministry down to uh, a Nazarene church down in Oklahoma City, and then we call it the Indian Nazarene Mission because that's the focus of the people there. And so we're going to show you a video that's another opportunity. It's going to be on the, the, the banquet night. We're going to be collecting funds, and you may hear some more about it, but this will tell you a little bit of where it's, where it's headed. A few eyes will show that. serves urban children and youth through after-school programs and summer programs at First Indian and May Avenue Nazarene churches. The students in our program are considered at risk for one or more of the following reasons. Poverty, fatherlessness, having an incarcerated parent, or growing up in homes where drug abuse or gang activity is prevalent. The students in our program seek to have futures that differ from the harsh reality in which they are being raised. In effort to teach the children about the joy of giving, we have given the students the opportunity to earn points for good behavior, participating in cleanup, serving the community, 
in helping other students. These points will convert to dollars that they can spend in the Christmas store. At the Christmas store, the students will be given the opportunity to purchase gifts for parents, grandparents, and siblings. Would you be willing to partner with us in this endeavor by donating items such as books, games, sporting goods, necklaces, candles, tools, flashlights, and other family-related items? We hope you will join us this Christmas season in bringing the light of Christ into the homes of Jubilee Partners students. program that uh, supplements the mission. I do have an update though. This video was done as a generic video and so here's the update. Instead of bringing items, they just want us to bring an offering. And so the night of the banquet, we're going to have a table. If you want to come, just be praying how the Lord would have you uh, uh, write a check to Jubilee Partners uh, or if you put a check made payable to community, just note to Jubilee Partners and we will get that to them so they can purchase the items to put in the Christmas store. Um, two other announcements. Number one, and that is uh, the Women of Faith has a simulcast uh, that is going to be hosted at um, Guthrie Christian Church Friday, December the 6th. If you want to know more information, see this young lady right here. She is going to be taking care of that, and there's some flyers out in the foyer also if you'd like to be part of that. And then one last thing, and I, we don't, how many have had a birthday this year? See there, you, you all fall for most. <clears throat> That's good, I'm glad. Uh, how many hope to have another one? I'm, th I'm thankful. That. We happen to have somebody that today, it's their birthday. I wonder who that might be. If it's your birthday today, would you stand up? It's actually Macaulay Savage who's in our sound booth. We wanna say thank you, Macaulay. <laughs> Happy birthday. Amen. It's a good thing to have birthdays. Tonight, I'd have you just, if you'd like to sing Christmas carols and eat chocolate, uh, sweets, come. We're going to have this sing out just Christmas carols out of this little booklet, booklet and we're going to be over there, and it's going to be with a piano, and we've invited churches from all around the area. It's going to be awesome. Okay, are you ready? Amen. It's time for the Christmas ser series to kick off. We have a few weeks before Christmas. You know, there's a song, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. How many knew that started in October <laughs> in some of the retail outlets? But what I am excited about is as a church body, we can encourage one another, we can open scripture and be encouraged to prepare our hearts to be in tune with what God's wanting to do this year through your life, in your life. How many believe God can use you during this Christmas season? How many know that that can even be in Walmart, at the mall? On, uh, how many knew God was with you when you were on the Black Friday shopping spree? I know some of you were, uh, were uh, protected. <laughs> it was a good thing, but I am excited about it. Today we're going to, uh, if you have your Bibles, make sure and grab them. We've uh, got some Bibles in each of the corners. Now this particular series, I'm going to not be verse by verse or exegesic. I'm going to be more topical. Uh, the first one is going to kick off, and that is today, because it's a good title, is What Time is Christmas? What time is it? And I, you may not know this fact, science or scientists tells us that, that those who live north of the equator, that includes us, the longest night of the year is December 21st. That's called a winter what? Solace. Solace. Okay. But as a kid, everybody knows, a kid would not agree with that. They would say that the longest night of the year is not December 21st, but which night? December 24th, Christmas Eve. And so, I don't know about you, I, I can, I, I, as a kid, I kept waking up. How many of you ever, you know, because I know there's now two new traditions, you know, we'll do Christmas here or there. But when it was Christmas mornings, when you got to open your packages, how many are all night long before we're going, what are, what, is it time yet? Is it here yet? Does anybody else do that but me? I think we all did. It, it's a great time. And so, this, what time is Christmas? The Bible says... Speaking of time, the Bible says that everything that happens in the world happens exactly in the timing that God chooses. Do you agree with that? Amen. 
And, and it's in, throughout the Bible. And, and, and so this question of what time Christmas is, God specifically chose the, the time Jesus Christ would come to this earth. In fact, Jesus Christ coming to you. What time is Christmas? It's not an accident. If you have your Bibles, go turn with me to Galatians chapter 4. And we're going to read 4 and 5. I'm going to read out of the Living Bible. And you look in your sermon notes. I have those now. I know for months we haven't had fill in the blanks. But uh, we're going to see if this is something people would like to do. We may go back to it or whatever. And this picture is actually Big Ben at Christmas time. I happen to find that. It kind of fits the picture. But read out loud with me. I'm going to read off the screen here. Galatians 4, 4 and 5. It says, when the right time came, the time God decided on, he sent his son born of a woman, so that he could adopt us, his very own children. Isn't that neat? When we think about that God waited, he waited for just the right time to send Christ. So what time is Christmas this year? I believe we can find that answer in four statements or four components or things that were said to the shepherds by the angels that very first Christmas. So if you have your notes, your talk notes, if you want to do a fill in the blank, here comes the first one. Christmas time is time to release my fears. Release my fears. Say that out loud with me. Release my fears. How many of you all have in the last 12 months worried about the economy? Okay, or have thought about it a little bit. How many about your health or bills or your kids, or your grandkids, or maybe, maybe just your job. There, there's, there's a lot that, to worry about. In fact, you, if you don't have enough to worry about, just turn the TV on and watch it for about 30 minutes. Uh, the first thing the angel said in Luke chapter 2, verse 10 is this, and, and it's the, I read, and the angel appeared to the shepherds, and they were terrified, but the angel said what? Do not be afraid. Isn't that interesting? Don't be afraid. Now, if he was saying that to us today as a, as a people with all that's going on, he'd say, you know, let go of your fear. Uh, uh, maybe he would say, release your anxiety, you know, cast your care on me, uh, chill out, right? He'd, he'd say, uh, turn it down, calm it down. And, and, and if you didn't realize this, in the Bible, 365 times is the words fear not. It's one for every day of the week, over the year, isn't it? Fear not. God's trying to get us to get that message, I believe. It's a time, well, in fact, every time God speaks in the Bible, there many times he says, don't be afraid. Why? Because I believe many people are afraid of God. I think many people are afraid of what he might do. How many of you, remember uh, a, a little bit of fear before you maybe accept him? How many of you are afraid of him telling you to go to Africa and be a missionary? See, I think sometimes we don't want to, la, 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 I don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. Because if we're not careful, he might ask you to do something. But so there's this fear, and he says, don't be afraid. He's speaking to us this morning. Did you know that? Amen. Not me. Did you know the Spirit is resting in this place? And he wants to get a hold of you and make sure you're in tune with what he sees completing through your life. Maybe it's for somebody else's benefit. But we need to listen. We need not, not to be afraid. I know that every time I bring up outside of church, and I, you know, I ride and go out and do a lot of things, and I ever bring up the Lord, it, they, people seem to get up tight. Do you ever find that? You start bringing up things about the Lord, about people that don't go to church with you, and they kind of get a little like, well, yeah, okay, um, where are we going? They're afraid. Do you know what they, I think they're afraid of? They're afraid of the future. They're afraid of what does this mean if I start listening or talking? What is this free? I might become one of those Jesus freaks if I were to talk about him all the time. Let me tell you what, Christmas is a great time when one year is ending and a new year is beginning. One season is wrapping up, if you would say, and then what happens on December 26th? We start planning for New Year's, the new year. God says, I believe at Christmas time, don't be afraid. Number two. 
After we release our fears, Christmas time is a time to renew my faith. Let's say that out loud together. Christmas time is a time to renew my faith. Now, some of you need new before you can renew. I love the whole fact when we talked about revival, you got to have viable before you can have revival. And we're going to talk a little bit in part number three about the viable part or the, or the living God's part in you. But, but I need to let you know, and I know you know this, people that are here this morning, that Christmas is not about Rudolph and Santa and, and Frosty and Scrooge and, and Rainbow Bride and Yogi's Christmas and Homer Simpson's Christmas or anybody else's Christmas. Did you know that? If you agree with that, just say amen. amen. It's really about who? Jesus Christ. Christ, Christ Mass. Luke 2, chapter 2 verse 10 that goes on and says I bring you the what most joyful news ever announced now I know some of you've had babies and some recently but and and, and the fact that when you hear that you know like cry after as, 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 as when it's all done that's not the, the mom crying out I'm talking about when the baby begins to cry out it's a joyful thing it's a great news but this is better than that he says joyful news and if you get take that greek word and 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 look at what it really means it's the good news it's great news it's fantastic news that's what he brought to this earth that's who jesus christ is so christmas is good news look to your neighbor and tell him christmas is good news i know god is doing a lot in this fellowship i've been in other congregations and 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 i was at a church once that was had some explosive growth and there were people that questioned uh, or were so curious about the formula and, and and i tell you here's what i have found no matter what the church but if it's growing the, the, it's it's not about its pastors necessarily it's not about beautiful buildings it's not about having adequate parking you know those, those things are great the, the secret to a church that's on fire or growing or be, and having impact is that they have the good news and guess what? The church is you. Do you have the good news? Because if you've got the good news, other people need the good news. They, 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 the, the, the world, and let me tell you something. The good news is getting better and better because the bad news keeps getting worse and worse. Think about it. And everybody wants the good news. So Christmas time is a good time to renew your faith. And you might say, so what's this good news? Let me break it down real quick. Number one, the first reason is you matter to God. You matter matter to God. So say that to yourself out loud. I matter to God. Do you believe it? I matter to God. God knows everything about you. He knows what you did last night, what you were thinking in the parking lot, what you've been thinking all week long. He knows you're good and you're bad and you're ugly. And guess what? He still loves you. He still loves you. And you can go, me? Yeah, you. I know I'm going to be a little funny here, but I want you to really get it. God loves me. You matter to him. He cares for you. He knows everything, and he loves you in spite of yourself. Praise the Lord. The second thing is, and I'm going to have you say this in first person, but it says you're not an accident. So now it's, use the word I. You tell yourself out loud, I am not an accident. Now, now say it to your neighbor like you mean it. I am not an accident. Because you know what? There are people around this I don't know if in your workplace, but there are a lot of people on this earth that really want you to feel like you're less than them. And that somehow that you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Let me tell you what, if you're a child of God and you're following his will and way, you're never in the wrong place at the wrong time. Amen. Now you can choose to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but if you're following him, he's appointed you for that place and that time and that people. He's got a plan and a purpose. And let me tell you what, as we discover what his tuning for my life, your life is, personal, what his tuning is for us personally, that's when we begin to experience all that God has for us. The third reason that it's good news, that God wants you to know him. God wants you to know him as well as he knows you. Think about it. If he knows everything about you, good, bad, and ugly, right, and loves you anyway, he wants you to love him and know everything about him. He knows, you know, he, he's glad that you know that he knows you, but he wants you to know him. That's why he sent Christ. 
That's why he sent Jesus Christ. He, if he wanted us to relate to birds and trees and, you know, be all earthy, he'd just have sent birds and grown trees. If he wanted us to relate and communicate with cows, guess what? He had sent a cow. If he wanted us to communicate with dogs or, or other animals, he had done that. And those he created, but what he sent as the Savior was somebody that looked like you and I. He said he formed him in his own image. We were formed in his image, and then he sent himself back as a, a baby in our image, a human being. Hmm. It's great news. I can tell you something, though. I found that Christmas time, our background tends to come to the surface. The people who don't attend church on a regular basis, it seems like around Christmas and Easter, they, they start thinking about church. You know, something that deals with some grand creator. And depending on, you know, so I don't know your background. Maybe, maybe it was Catholic. Maybe your family, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Baptist. You might have even been Jewish. I don't know what your background was. But let me tell you something. It's not really that important what your religious background is when it comes to Christmas. The meaning of Christmas. Because Christmas, why Christ came, was not for you to have a religion. Now listen to what I just said. Christ didn't die for your sin to give you a great religion. See, religion many times is man trying to reach God, but a relationship has already began to be poured out, and that's when God loved you. A relationship's about us getting to know him as well as he knows us. It's not a religion. So, Christmas is a time to release my fear, right? Christmas is a time to renew my faith. And maybe you need new faith before you can renew faith. Real practical here on the side, renewal. Renewal means putting back in front in the right order the priorities of things. Renewal means to recommit. And, and how many of you all know that around January 1, after you've eaten so much like you did in the last few days, we start getting a renewal on our exercise program, right? See, the Lord has one for our spiritual program, and what he wants to do is us not wait till we're exhausted and feeling a little waterlogged. He's saying, look, this is a time, a Christ time, a Christmas time when the lost will be as ready to hear about me as ever. And I'm going to put you in places where you can, you can share the hope that's within you. I'm going to put you in places, remember last week we all agreed to the no complaint season, the no complaint zone, remember that? Some of you are like, I'm glad I wasn't here. I actually had somebody come and say, I didn't stand up. <laughs> we had people stand up in, in agreement. So, But if we aren't complaining out and about, and what we're doing is rejoicing and, and, and sending out life words, people are going to run into the Savior. Have you noticed that? Hmm. Renew your faith. The third thing Christmas time is, is to receive forgiveness. So say this with me. Christmas time is a time for forgiveness. To receive forgiveness. Luke 11 goes on to say, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And when we talk about a Savior, how many of you in here realize that God didn't really want to send a salesman? How many of you know what a salesman, how many knows what a used car lot salesman, the, the, the atypical? We don't like them, do we? Well, he didn't send a salesman. He didn't send a politician. He didn't send a scientist because what he wanted to do is send us a Savior. That's what we needed. I hope you know you need a Savior. My heart breaks for the many churches, Protestant, Christ-oriented churches, that there are a number of people that never acknowledge their need for a Savior. They got it. I know professional ministers, professional preachers that are as good as any news anchor or weatherman. They're polished, and I, maybe they can do the green screen thing. I can't, you know, the weatherman. But you need a Savior. If you don't feel like you need a Savior, then you're missing what the Savior has to offer. Let me tell you why you need a Savior. God sent a Savior so we could receive forgiveness. See, that shed blood paid for our sin debt. So he sent us to, to make a way. 
Now, why, what's he making a way for? Heaven. How many know that heaven is a perfect place? Heaven is a perfect place. There's no sin in heaven. Say amen if you believe with that. There's no sin. There's no suffering. There's no pain. Many of y'all aren't very, very excited about heaven. Now, let's leave me down here. I love the pain and the sin and the suffering. You know, that's okay. It's going to be great up there, I guess, for some of those folks. But I'd just rather stay here. Okay, let me read this list again. There's no sin in heaven. There's no suffering. There's no pain. There's no sorrow. There's no heartache. Now, how y'all are thinking? See, it's this perfect place. The problem is this place of no imperfection, okay, this place that no imperfection is found. The problem is we all have a big problem. Why? Because we're not perfect. Somebody elbow your neighbor and said, I knew that. We're not perfect. This perfect place, God says, you need a Savior. You need something to because you can't get there on your own. I don't care how good you are. You may think, well, I really am good. I went to the right schools, and I cleaned my mouth up, and I tithe plus 2%. That means 12. Uh, and I do all these things. You still need a Savior. You could be Mother Teresa or Billy Graham. And I guarantee you, he'll tell you, you still need a Savior. So what we have to do when we talk about being saved or needing a Savior is first you have to admit it. The second thing you have to do is you have to turn to him and tell him, I need you. And admit, I need you. Get to the point where you finally give up and give over your life to him. My daughter, this is a, a neat illustration that, that uh, I, I'm going to use a, a brief reflection of her life. She has been a lifeguard for the last couple of summers at a Christian camp called Pine Cove uh, found in Texas. And, you know, as a, as a lifeguard, if anybody ever studied lifeguard, you know that you can't really save anybody that doesn't want to be saved. You can't really go out and save somebody if they're still in the process of trying to save themselves. You know, they're out there drowning and they're thrashing and kicking and, you know, and yeah, they're going up and down I don't know how many times. But anyway, what a, a, a trained lifeguard will do is they'll swim out there. They'll respond to the urgency. They'll get close, but they'll wait till you stop flashing. Them. Because, you know, especially if they're bigger than you, they knock you out or drag you on down, right? So this, this lifeguard will, will wait till the person finally gives up and is about to go under. And at that point, all they have to do is put a hand under their shoulder and swim to shore. They're worn out. They've given up. They stop trying to save themselves. See, I think sometimes the reason we don't enjoy all the savior has to offer is we're still trying to you know christ has got us under his arm but we're still doing this i got it i got it or maybe you don't have him well we desperately need a savior i don't know if you know that but i know i know that i know that i can't earn it and i can't deserve it I know that to get to heaven, it's about an amazing grace that is poured out by our Lord. It's a grace that gives us more than we deserve. John 3, 16 and 17, Jesus said this, For God, in some translations say, so loved. God loved this world so much that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And he goes on to say this, God didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, but to what? See, I think many times religions try to create a, a hellfire and brimstone, you know, you better accept Jesus or you're going to burn like a piece of sausage in hell. I'm going to scare you hell out of you. That can work. But I don't see Christ hanging on the cross pointing his finger at us. I don't see a baby in a manger that drew such a heavenly host around him to come and point out to you that you're going to burn and go to hell. I think what we see is his love poured out. See, he didn't come to condemn us. He came to change us. How many of you all been changed? Well, let me tell you what, he's not finished. If you've experienced his supernatural touch, if you've experienced even just the beginning of change, 
then step a little further into the, into the change that God has for you by not fearing, by renewing your faith, by receiving his forgiveness. Let me move on, number four. Christmas is a time to rebuild relationships. Let's say that out loud. Christmas is a time to rebuild relationships. And you know, I know many of us in this room say, oh, well, you know, let bygones be bygones. I don't find that in the Bible. Luke 2.14 says, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards those you like. Those that you can tolerate. Those that are not in the outlaw list, only the in-laws list. See, I think we all know that God wants us to have peace with him. We always talk about, I got to make peace with God. I got to make peace with God. But let me tell you what, he wants us to make peace with other people too. His whole ministry is about reconciliation, man to him, and then really spreading that reconciliation forward. Do you remember the Peanuts cartoon? Lucy says to Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, it's Christmas season. I think we ought to bury our differences and forgive each other and try to be kind and get along. And Charlie Brown says, great, but why just this season? Why not all year? And Lucy says, well, what do you think I am, some kind of fanatic? See, our holidays many times expose conflict that has been part of the family or the event for a long time. Sometimes it's old stuff. Sometimes it's just differences. Sometimes it's, I don't stuff the turkey that way, or I don't dress this or that, or I have, you know, sometimes it's that, but sometimes it's, it's um, I think God calls us to do more than just gut out the holidays. I think he wants us to do more than avoid Aunt Gertrude. Would you all say amen to any of that? See, I think what he wants us to do is the body of Christ with a renewed fire and a renewed anointing in in, in their spirit and seeing that their life is an appointment for this time and such a time as this, that God wants to take this season, this Christmas, this life of yours, and he wants it to be like a fire set ablaze through some of those places. And you know what it's going to be? Is sometimes those places are going to be the hard places because it's not about you. It's about him. He wants to go to the hard places. 1 John 1, 17 says this. If we're living in the light of God's presence, just as Christ does, then we have wonderful fellowship and joy with each other. When Christ, now this is something you can write down. If Christ is in me, okay, think about that. If Christ is in me and Christ is in you, then Christ is not going to argue with Christ. And you're saying, well, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait a minute. So you're saying, I'll never have an argument. No, what I'm saying is you may despise or dislike a part of their flesh, but if you can refocus in on the Jesus in them, if they have Jesus, you can look in and say, I'm looking for the Jesus. Boy, you're difficult to not. This is an example, dear. I'm looking at my wife and she's getting these. I never mind. This is only an example. I would say, honey. You know, no, I wouldn't say honey. I would say, you know, it's a really difficult person, whoever this person is. To relate to you. I I don't really like your personality. You're a little bit like a porcupine. But I am called by God to to bring Christ into Christmas this year through my life. And so I'm going to look for Christ in you. You've got that bumper sticker that said you go to that church down the street. And you got this that says you got the t-shirt. You've been there and done that. So I hope Christ in Jesus. So I'm going to look for him. Well, by golly, it is in there. Real doggies. And if I start looking for Christ, and I allow my Christ to identify, and then I look at what Christ is doing in their life, and I ask the Lord how to bring my life into bear with his design and purpose for that life, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be less porcupine needles coming your way. Wow, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else is getting this, but I'm convicted. <laughs> When Christ is in me, I should maybe say, if Christ is in you, and Christ is in someone else, are you looking for him? Then you're not going to argue with Christ. We're never going to have peace on earth until the Prince of Peace reigns in our hearts. 
Oh, we can talk about him, but peace on earth has to be through the people on earth that believe. It starts with us who believe. We need to be, rebuild relationships. So as I bring to close this morning, and by the way, most of our messages for the next three weeks, four weeks, are going to be shorter, and they're going to be a, they're a, make room for the Lord. And they're going to make room for you can ask friends. You can ask, it's always going to be about Christmas and Christ. It's going to be about the journey to the, to the cross via the manger. And so let me encourage you to invite your friends and family. Fear not. You're here this morning, and I, I don't know what brought you here. Maybe it was friends. Maybe it was commitment. Maybe you're a staffer. Maybe you didn't have any better thing to do. <laughs> but let me just tell you, God brought you here. If he designed, the, the, decides when things are to happen, then you being here was part of his design. And, 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 and you know, when you, when you think about God and his purpose for your life, then this is part of a finding out what he has for you. I believe he brought you here to say something like this. Don't waste this Christmas. It's time. You see where the title came from? It's time. What time is Christmas this year? Now. Now's the time. Now's the time. Release your fears. Let go and let God handle the worries. Let go of that fear of, of exposing. It's all right to say, Merry Christmas. I don't care where you work. And, I, you know, if I'm wrong, we'll, we'll pray and God will provide something better. But if you're in a, a place that says, now, we don't say Merry Christmas. We say Happy Holidays. You tell them in the, in the lovingest, most graceful way, I understand your corporate policy, but it is Christmas to me. Some of you are like going, holy smokes. Fear not. Let me tell you what, if you start taking a stand for what you believe and what is the truth of the word, you'll be amazed at what God will do in your place. He'll take care of you. He loves you, remember? The whole thing, manger, life, and death, and resurrection, is because he loves you. It's not a holiday. It's not a religion. So release your fears it's time to renew your faith. It's time. It's time to renew your faith and remember the good news, remembering that he loves you and that you matter to him and he wants you to come back to him. It's time to for, receive forgiveness. Well, that's a big one. Did you know that if you struggle with forgiving somebody, sometimes it means you don't feel forgiven yourself? And if you want to, to, to release all that, that is available from heaven through our lives, it comes with us doing things that God, it, it's in his DNA, and that is restoring. It, that's, that's healing up. That, that's, that's receiving his forgiveness first so that we can forgive others. Remember? We've got to know we need a Savior. Remember, if you're out there swimming the rivers of life and you're just calling on God when you get a little tired and need your little floaty inflated, you don't have it. You need to be out there and let him carry you through the waters. Stop trying to save yourself and let him do it. Stop trying to make a life for yourself and let him be your life. And the last thing is we need to, time to build and rebuild a relationship. Relationships, first is with him. Rebuilding, restoring, returning. How many of you have run into somebody um, recently and you had not seen them for years? Just, or maybe it's months. It's just been a long time. And, and what do we do? We sit down usually, well, first we text them or uh, Facebook them or something. I, that's the new way. But if we really are pursuing, renewing that relationship, typically we go, let's go eat somewhere. Let's meet somewhere. Let's have some coffee somewhere, right? We spend time together. God wants you to sit down with him. 
He wants you to renew time with him on a regular basis outside of Sundays and Wednesdays. He wants you to, to get alone with him and, and be in his word. He wants to have coffee with you when you have coffee in the morning. He wants to be part of your meal and so you can give thanks. You, you know, he doesn't need to bless the food. The food's got nourishment in it without it, but you can give thanks and say, thank you for the provision, Lord. Thank you for putting me in this old ratty cafe so I can talk about you. Thank you for this hairdresser that is, is, is in my life and, and how we can sit and talk about Jesus right in the middle of all these other cackleberries. I don't even know what that is, a cackleberry. Y'all just were going with it. I, I don't know. It just came out. But he wants to sit down with you. He wants to renew that. He wants to kill. It's time. <laughs> it's time. Tell yourself it's time. In closing verse. Because <laughs> <Whew>. if. <laughs> See, if he were to really pour out his blessing this morning on you, you probably couldn't get up. I mean, the full measure. Imagine that. I'm not talking about that you're not blessed, but what if he just kind of went, I'm going to open it all up? It's just, I'm just going to let heaven drown you right now. How many would like that? See, when I think about a verse and I think about if that literally happened now, wow, that's overwhelming. I don't know about you. That's kind of how he loves me. It's time for you to turn to me. Your Lord and I... <laughs> I will come and pour out blessings upon you. It's time. Let's stand. If you wouldn't mind to reach across the aisle and grab a hand. Connect the body of Christ. You're not alone. You may be a guest this morning going, holy smokes, I don't touch people. I, this is, I didn't know this was touchy-feely church. Well, that's why we have hand sanitizer in the lobby. Actually, you can do elbow to elbow, you know, whatever. Whatever is good. But one of the things we try to do is remind ourselves, and this is just a practical way, a physical way of we're not alone. We're the body. And let me tell you what, as much as that may look great, God's got his arms around you and he says it's time so let's bow our heads I'm, I'm let me ask you this question here we are December the first and it's the Christmas time it's Christ time and maybe this morning the Lord has just been stirring your heart differently than he has before and you know in your heart that you've never truly admitted you needed a savior oh you know about him <laughs> you've never said i need you maybe you've finally given up paddling and thrashing and you're ready to have someone rescue you if that's you this morning with every head bowed i just have you raise your hand and i know you're holding somebody else's hand but just raise up your hand because i would like to pray with you this is your first time to accept christ trust him Maybe this morning you've decided because of the prompting of the Spirit that it's time. It's time for you to do something that you haven't been doing. Maybe it's time for you to trust God with something that you've been holding on to. And it's time to say, God, I'm giving it to you. If you've got something that you've been holding on to that you know God's saying to your heart, it's time. And you'd just like me to pray with you. Just raise your hand. Just raise up. Whoever's hand's hooked to you, just raise it on up. Okay. Okay. And then I'd like to ask this question, because I think we need the power of God's intercession when I ask this question. How many of you know that what's ahead of you are some difficult people or some difficult situations relationally and you need the power of God 
to go ahead of you if anything of Christ happens. Do you have any of those kinds of things going on ahead of you? It might be work, it might be family. I don't know, maybe your shopping trips. Just raise your hand up. Well, then let's pray. Father, we acknowledge that you bring all provision, all the provision of heaven to bear on our lives because of the love you have for me. God, you spared no expense to make a way for me to have an eternity with you. And you didn't leave me alone. You sent your spirit when I accepted you. You, 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 you spent, sent your, your, your helper. You sent the Holy Ghost. And God, we stand here as a people. There's a song that says, standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> and then it goes, hallelujah. <laughs> God, if we'd rejoice at being needy, <laughs> what would happen? I think the heavens would just shout out. And so, God, we're a people, and I know this people group, uh, uh, people raise their hands about things that it's time for. And, Father, I pray that you would, would just meet their needs, Lord, that you'd bring all your provision. I, I pray specifically they would see you meeting their need, opening doors, giving them courage, and seeing the glory of you <laughs> enter into those places. And God, so many more raise their hands saying, there are, there are knuckleheads ahead for us. <laughs> There are difficult people that we may love but don't like. Father, there are people we don't like and we don't even want to love. And Lord, we're supposed to be Christians. We're supposed to be those that take the love of the Lord out into this world so they can see you and turn to you. It's not about church membership. It's not about religion. And so, God, I pray for those that raise their hands. I pray that we would have the anointing of Christ, that as we left this room and we head out, that, God, those, those relational places, those difficult places that need restoration, that, Father, that forgiveness would flow into us first and then out to them, and that you begin to repair. Father, let us not wait till the funeral time for us to get before a coffin of a dead person and say, I sure wish I'd have taken time. God, no, this is about life. You came and brought life through Christ. Christmas, and we're going to be the extension of life giving this year. We pray in Jesus' name. And God's people said, All right, you're about ready to take the field team. Yeah, give yourself a hand because you're on the winning team. We're about to take state. We're about to go national. The Super Bowl's ahead of us. It's called Christmas. God bless you all as you're dismissed and go take this world for the King.